take 12. Cheers and uh, welcome back to Badger Outdoors. Feeling a bit crook uh, and over the last week. Um, so uh, yeah, I might not be completely with it. Head cold and barely sleeping, so there we go. That's life. Uh, right, so I normally just do a video every two or three weeks. I go out camping every weekend, really, but a video every two or three weeks. And 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 uh, and, but I thought I would I would film this one because I've got a couple of bits of kit to show you, uh, which one of them is a wood burning stove, and I'll compare that to the bush box, which is my main one. Other type that I use, I've got another other couple of types, but they're they're, uh, they're not particularly good. Um, and. Uh, Yes, and the other thing is to look at a UK street legal bushcraft knife, which um, I've had for probably about three or four months. I've used it two or three times out, um, but it's in, an interesting bit of kit to look at. So I'll, ch I'll chat about that. Um, a quick talk around the gear that I've got. A simple, very simple meal because I'm feeling a little bit crook. It is quarter past six. It's 26 degrees centigrade. Um, it's going to get dark at about something like 10 o'clock, round about that. I'm not really fussed. I'm, I'm really early. I'm in absolutely no hurry this evening. Um, I'll talk to you briefly about this area and the experiences that I've had in this area, which are, uh, which are, yeah, a little, a little bit odd. Um, but there we go. Uh, yeah, so hope you enjoy it. Um, see what happens. <laughs> Uh, the last time I was here, I uh, had the camo over over that. In fact, I think I had the um, a hummingbird hammock with a camo laid over it to see if that would be good enough to uh, to deter any bugs and things. But it was an awful night's sleep, so uh, I got a bug net this time, thankfully. Um, yeah. So this this bit of wood is this whole is a, actually quite a vast wood. Most of it is owned by a, a big corporation. Um, they lease some of it off to the military. There is a public right of way through it. Um, and I've camped in there a few times um, when it's been clear to uh, go in there, when the public have had, uh, had access. The company's really good. They let you wander around there uh, with no problem. They've done a lot of work recently, um, chopped down a lot of dead ash, and it's all quite open at the moment, and people do walk their dogs around there. So it's not really a good place to camp. So I've just avoided it really for quite some time um, but this bit of the wood is is really old and not looked after at all so I don't know who owns this but it's certainly not managed like uh, like over there there is a footpath which goes down there it's probably 50 60 meters away but you hardly ever see anyone on that footpath it's uh, it's really really quiet right let's have a quick look through the kit so the the hammock is the same one in the last video, so it's the one wind. Uh, very different environment I'm in, I'm, I'm in this time. I've actually fitted the Cumulus Silver 250. I fitted it properly, got some elastic on there. Um, you, I've snapped it on. So in certain places I've just snapped it on just to hold it um, where my shoulder, the opposite end of where my shoulder is, I've unsnapped it and then the same on the opposite diagonal side just to allow the the um, and the quilt to to fit properly um, and this time I've used my lightweight hummingbird straps so there's the cinch buckle that it comes with not using that this time just using the carabiner on my on the uh, <coughs> continuous ridge uh, continuous ridge line on the co continuous loops that, um, that I put in myself now you could say well couldn't you just attach that um, carabiner onto here maybe just in there but you end up with a with a bit of a weird angle I just decided it was just a neater and tidier to do that um, I might change my mind I think I don't know but um, so that's my setup for tonight uh, I've got my amazing fisherman's table which I bloody love this thing uh, my trespass trusty old trespass stool it's lost the straps on there uh, it's had to have some some repairs on the on the legs on the, on the bottom there to stop mud getting in but yeah that's a brilliant bit of kit and then my little hammock table which I've had for quite some time now it comes on most of my hammock trips um, and has a very important job as you can see there uh, yeah 
the bag. I've got to be careful my foot. I've done something to it, but uh, the bag. This is becoming my summer default now. It's an awesome, um, love it. One Tigris Wild Rocket 45. Uh, yeah, definitely my default summer bag. Brilliant. Just hang things on there. They drop down through here. It's it's everything about it. Um, yeah, the Marding Top 60 litre Marding Top, not the 65. That's my default winter one. I thought that's going to be the one I was just using the winter in the summer. It, it also. But this one, it's, it's the right sort of size and um, <coughs> it stops me from carrying too much gear. And then also, um, I have a gear sling and this gear sling is from One Wind. I do have another gear sling, which is the DD Hammocks um, gear sling. That is, that has got proper tree straps um, and I can, I can hang that between two trees, trees and, and use it as a seat. It's all nicely set up. Whereas this one here, is a little bit trickier to set up as a seat. You've got to have the gap. Basically, you don't have tree straps, it's paracord onto trees, and then you're putting your weight onto that paracord on a tree, and I just don't like the idea of that. I'd rather use proper straps, but I thought it is, it is lighter and smaller than the DD Hammock one. So like I say, this one is one wind. Um, yeah, it's, it does, it is a quite a nice little condensed unit. Uh, you can use it as a rucksack cover. You can sling it under, obviously under the hammock. And I didn't think it would it would have long enough paracord, but actually I've worked out how to do it. I'm just gonna have, I would have a single single end and then it, I've worked out how to do it. So you could fit it under there, but actually I quite like it at this height. This is sort of table height. And it just means I can put everything that's not in my rucksack. I can just chuck in here and it's, it's actually working quite quite well, I quite like it. But you can use this as a seat, like I say. Um, you, yeah, so you can use it as a seat. I've seen some videos about it. But for me, it's just a, a good place just to store some stuff. Yeah, so I've had a, a couple of um, weird experiences um, of this area. And I've probably stayed in this, in this bit of area six or seven times. I know people have lit fires here or, or been camping here just from the evidence at least two or three times here I would say and, and certainly once over in that older little camp but this older part of the wood when I've camped in the newer part of the wood just over there and there was there was a site that I used to go to quite a lot that was in that in that section and while over there I heard some very strange what I would call animal noises uh, I would somewhere between a bark and a grunt uh, but very loud that was seemed to seem to be coming from from this area you know it's not a deer I know what a deer bark sounds like uh, around here it's really roe deer um, you get a few munt jacks but ma mainly roe deer nothing else and I know what they sound like um, and I know dogs can sound very different but it certainly didn't sound like a dog it was, it was quite an odd odd noise and then also on the thermal, um, before they cleared everything over in that, the, over in that uh, newer part, that, the, the part over there, before they cleared everything down, I had my thermal and I remember just, just scanning around at night in the dark. It was, it was a dark night, there was no moon up or anything like that. And I could see what I thought was a person that was walking away from me. Um, now you could say, well, it could, it could have been a deer. I couldn't see any arms moving or anything. Maybe it was a deer. I don't think it was. I thought it was a person. They were walking away. They were quite a way off, so it, and it was only for two or three seconds. Um, but it was quite obvious on the thermal. I mean, really obvious on the thermal. Um, look down, nothing, no lights, nothing like that. And then more recently, uh, again o over the, in there, but since they've cleared it, uh, it was this. It was closer to me, and it was definitely a person, I think, um, who was walking along. The fence line there I was the other side of the fence I'm guessing he was walking along there and I could see arms moving um, much more obvious uh, again it was only for sort of three or four seconds look down look but look back in just caught him for another second or two and then gone um, lost him or her or them or they or Z or whatever their pronouns were it I lost it um, yeah, it's not good down that road, eh? <laughs> uh, so there's something odd, definitely something odd going on uh, in this in this part of the wood. 
uh, yeah, people wandering around at night. And the, the, the person who I saw with the arms moving, um, clearly being, they're clearly being cautious and careful as they were moving, looking around. Couldn't, but I couldn't see, it was just, it was just a blob with arms moving, you know, at the distance it was. So I'm always a little bit cautious of, of, uh, of this area and always listen it, listening out for, uh, for noises. Right, second beer is a New England IPA, 6% Beaver Town Space Hulk. I do like these, I've had a few of these. They're very nice. I, I've realized that wearing what I'm wearing is not really appropriate for, for the environment I'm in, given that the path is just over there. And if someone looked from the path, I think, I think they might be able to see me. Um, so I've got to keep my voice down a little bit. Um, oh, little buzzies all over the place. All right, first bit of kit that I'm going to talk about is this. It is a UK legal carry bushcraft knife. And it's legal carry in that it's less than three inches, it's 2.8 inches, and it folds. Not locking. Really nice knife. Is it Makata? So there's are the scales, which is uh, the handle effectively, but uh, they go on the outside there. Uh, it has a lanyard hole in the end there. Quite thick, it's got a red liner in there. The folding mechanism, it feels like it's some sort of, is it a ball bearing? I don't know, but there's some sort of sprung loaded as a sort of safety feature and then it goes very easily. Um, it is stainless steel. It is a three mil wide blade, which is which is good for something this small. Um, uh, a three mil is good. So bushcraft knives, you can get them anywhere, really from two to four mils. Normally it's really two and a half up to four mils. Um, anything that's down the two mil range, good for food, nice and thin. Um, yeah, good good for food and that and that as well, that sort of thing. And um, some um, some light wood work, feather sticks, that sort of thing. Um, you get in the three mil is the sort of what I would say that most seem to be um, two and a half to three mil, um, and then the bigger ones are up to up to four mil. Good for splitting wood, processing wood, and that sort of thing, but maybe not so good on the on the food end of things. So this sits quite nicely in there. Um, it's got a Scandi grind. So that's the sort of grind there you can see. Um, now for this sort of knife, I'm really talking not to the bushcrafters because they know more about it than me probably, uh, almost certainly. But um, uh, for bushcrafting, yeah, the Scandi grind is the sort of default that most people go for. Although there are some people who like flat, like um, uh, a flat grind uh, or the sabre grind. Uh, sabre grind is, is a good more general purpose rather than focused on wood it's a bit more general purpose sort of uh, grind on the blade but uh, this is a zero scandy it looks like there's no second bevel so it comes down and then it and the, and it comes straight into a point there's no second bevel in there to give any strength or anything like that um, I wouldn't use this for splitting wood certainly and the general rule is when you're splitting wood you go for you take the blade length and the maximum wood you want to be splitting is uh, one inch less than that, so this would be, you know, maybe an inch and a half. You'd be splitting. It's almost, it's almost pointless. Um, and if you do try and splitting with this and and hammering it with um, uh, with a baton, then um, you're going to certainly if it's a locking blade, you're going to damage the lock. Um, and of course, it's a folding blade with no. If it's got no lock, um, yeah, you're just going to have more chance of damaging it. I would maybe just knock this into the top of a piece of wood and then get over the top of it and just apply pressure just to push through on a, on a small piece of, of wood. But I've used it a few times doing um, uh, what they call the tri-stick, just doing some notches and um, various little shapes that, uh, that I've, I just copy one of my other, uh, I've got a main sort of tri-stick that I, uh, that, uh, is it called a tri-stick? I think it is. Um, just, to, just to practice, um, techniques um, and, and it was actually really quite enjoyable to use it's, it's very comfortable um, you can get there is another company who uh, who makes me very similar I think I think they're called Castrom um, a Scandinavian I think they're Swedish um, they do something very similar which is a very nice 
uh, looking folding blade that is that is UK legal. This is from TBS, so the bushcraft store, uh, who deliver really quickly in the UK. Yeah, I think it's it's just a really nice um, bit of kit, a good um, 90 degree spine. It's a drop point, which is basically the blade just drops down there, um, which uh, I like the look of. Um, I think I'm not sure what the benefits are of a drop point really. Um, but they do a lot of the bushcraft knives do tend to tend to be like this. So if you do want to get into, uh, if you do are, are out wild camping in the woods and but you just want to keep something that's that's UK legal, um, I mean particularly somewhere like this where an individual probably owns this and and if and if they cared about it, which they clearly don't, but if they did care about it and it looked managed, uh, I'd probably avoid it anyway. To be if I'm really honest in terms of camping in it. Uh, I'd rather go for somewhere like the Forestry Commission or um, some open access or something like that. But if you do come into a, a, a place like this that you think, it, well, it could well be um, an individual that owns it, if you're caught on it, then that's trespass as a civil matter in the UK. But if you're caught on it with a knife that isn't legal carry, um, so, you know, a normal bushcraft knife, then you're into armed trespass, which is a criminal matter. And the police just have to, and, and then straight away the police can arrest you whereas they could come and find you otherwise and nothing they can do. Um, they would have to go and get the, uh, the the property owner who would then have to come and get you to move on. But yeah, as soon as you've got a knife, or well, anyone suspects you've got a knife, they do a search on you, whatever else. <laughs> Not that you ever see police uh, where I live. Blimey, you just don't see the police where I live. It's ridiculous. They're all in the cities on Pride Month, aren't they? Wandering around and, uh, and parading. So you never really see them. Anyway, so yeah, a really nice knife. Uh, it comes with a nice sheath. I think you have to pay a little bit more for this with a ferro rod. I put my own little bit of three mil elastic on there just to hold the ferro rod in. But um, yeah, now I wouldn't strike the ferro rod with the knife blade out like that. Put the thing away uh, and then you use the back of this and it's a pretty good, um, Plenty of sparks. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Plenty of sparks. It's a nice, nice, uh, nice spine on it. Um, you know, TBS are, are a very good company when it comes to this sort of stuff. You know, they do listen to the customers, so all, I've always been really impressed uh, with their stuff. But yeah, a very nice, a nice uh, sheath to put it into. Um, yeah, impressed, impressed. Right, that's the first bit of kit. I've got one other and uh, maybe another as well. We'll see how things go. Anyway, um, yeah, speak to you later. Now, yeah, I don't need to have this and straight away I've got a legal carry knife, but I've got <laughs> this, which is a very not UK legal uh, blade. But um, anyway, right. Short pieces. Now I could just snap everything, but it just makes a hell of a noise. And if you're trying to stealth camp, it's not ideal. Anyone on that path, if I was doing lots of snapping, much higher chance of being rumbled. Certainly if in the UK woods, the only thing that snap twigs when they're walking, for example, would be people Occasionally you might get a deer or snap a twig, but um, not, not normal. 20 minutes, just have a beer and I sit in the hammock and, uh, and then we'll do some food and I'll show you this, this stove. Right, it's quarter past eight now, so I'm gonna get on with um, getting, some, getting some food going. I'm enjoying my brew dog. Brew dog. Um, Normally I go for the sort of four to five percent in that sort of region, but it's nice to have something with a bit of a punch. Eight percent um, arcade made coin operated beer. It's um, yeah, it's it's hitting a spot is one way of putting it, I suppose. Um, right, so we're going to light light the um, light the stove now, which I've got here. Um, so the stoves I've got, I've got uh, a I think it's a Tokes gasifying stove which is one of the first things I bought I also bought another stove which is more like a mini barbecue it's uh, 
it's a bit a bit garbage really and it, you've got to build the thing and it t takes bloody ages the one thing i don't like about stoves is when you have to build them you know i like to get it out and it's ready to go really quickly that's important to me what i've learned about the bush boxes because i've got a steel one and a titanium one is the titanium buckles uh, and it doesn't go together as easy i have a lot more problems putting that one together nowadays now that it's had so much use whereas the steel one pretty much opens out give it a shake and it all just falls it falls into place so i'm a believer in steel but you do pay for the steel in terms of weight uh, and to give you an idea about the weight difference on a bush box if i will go for the, the steel one that i've got which is a smaller um, size bush box is 500 grams and if i went for the titanium one it'd be 315 grams so yeah that's a really significant difference in weight but the benefits are that it holds its shape so what i wanted was something that was lightweight but stainless steel so bearing in mind that the titanium bush box was 315 grams this is stainless steel it's not as good i don't think overall i don't think it's as good as uh, as a bush box in terms of design but this is stainless steel and it's 230 grams so i'm kind of excited by it it's from vargo hexagon wood stove it certainly feels like and i'm i'm really impressed by it um i just saw it at this at this show and thought that's it that, that's that's a really clever design and there it is as it comes uh, you'll see it's got one hinge connects to the main base the main base is a hexagon obviously with um with holes in there for the ash there's no collector under there which is important so you need to consider what the still consider what the ground that you're going to put it on so uh, this is on this is definitely on soil it's not on peat or anything like that um, but there it is so that that's the the base of it uh, this is this main section and you can see it cascades out um, on the base there are two connecting points where this slot is going to connect onto here which is a little bit that sticks out and then onto here which is a similar bit that sticks out but it's bent over so it's a bit thicker um, so this comes out here and it just folds around the first section side is nothing to connect onto the next one connects onto that first slot um, in there and then it carries on round and you get the idea it's not difficult is it um you get the idea and it goes round and then the final slot is there it's the thick slot which holds it in and then you're left with that the door is just opens and closes and what i really like about this is that if you're taking an alcohol stove you can obviously put the alcohol stove in there and you have the windbreak which is really important with an alcohol stove because they don't fire that that jet that heat up um, it just goes up naturally and therefore if you've got any sort of wind with an alcohol stove you you you, you lose the the value of it very quickly and it just takes they they take long enough as it is but they take a particularly long time if you've got any wind so having wind protection is done it's off the ground is on a stable platform you can put the alcohol stove into there and they can close that little door up and it's still uh, able to draw heat from underneath and then your pot can go on there so a 750 a typical toke 750 i've tried it just goes on there really nicely it's just a really simple system that goes together so quickly and if you want to do a fire well you just open it up and you just have your fire in there your little twigs you just stuff them in and your, your pot sits on the top um i don't know it just seems like a really simple system like i say you know there it is it's down and then and i don't like putting things together i don't like click, having to work out what bits click into what bits you know this is really friggin simple come on you can do it there you go really simple
Right, you do have to be <coughs> a little bit careful. There's not, not a lot of air is getting in there. So I found that it is definitely, this is, this stove is definitely a slow burner. But if you want to do a stew or something like that, then and you're happy to cook a little bit slower. It's not as quick as the bush box, I don't think. I don't think it'll be as good. But I'm not, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced yet. It's just that it doesn't seem to have the draw of air. There you go. So it's sort of calmed down quite quickly. But there's still tons of heat coming out of it. Um, so I think it's, I think it's going to be fine. It's just a, it's not as efficient and, a, and as full on as a, as a bush box. There we go. Yay. It's going to go quite well. So tonight it's going to use the MSR which is a nice bit of kit, which I haven't used much actually, uh, probably only two or three times. And in my cook bag, I um, always keep some oil. I all, I've learnt the lesson and I always keep it in a plastic bag. I fold over the top and then I put a, some elastic over, over the top. I've had it leak before and it was a right palaver. Anyway, slide it up the bag. Bit of oil, back down, fold it over, and then that on. Beautiful. That'll do. Haven't got a lot of room. do I think for now yeah so I really shouldn't be using a scandy grind for that sort of thing certainly not onto metal but um, I'll give it a strop when I get back I only thought about that when I was once it started Scanning grind should be for wood. There we go. I forgot my uh, FNL. I reckon 20 minutes, but quite heavy, but uh, <laughs> I have a history of dropping food. But yeah, that just burns quite nicely. If it goes down, then I've got to give a bit of air into there and chuck some more wood in, but it's actually been quite simple to, to, um, to fuel. I can keep that on a low heat, no problem. So yeah, I kind of, kind of like the idea. It's just, a little bit lower heat maybe I don't I don't know I've got tons of wood here I'll just keep just slowly keeping that stocked up plenty of wood you don't need much wood at all to keep this going okay we've got a deer parking away over there I've got squirrels having a right little Barney going on I think that deer is probably not far away I reckon he's 50 to 100 metres, something in that sort of distance. But he was, was over there earlier. He's now over here. And because of the way the terrain is, I think he's going to probably funnel through here soon. So I'll try and keep quiet and see if I can see him. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this. It's really chilling me out. The anxiety in me just switched on from where I can't tell you. Proper fear. I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. Then things turned for the worse. 
this thing had stood up, like stood up on two legs, and at this point the dogs were probably terrified. We all were. I think it was about, about seven feet tall, and it just stared at us. Now that I've scared the shit out of myself, um, I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> See you in the morning. It's raining. <clears throat> You've got to be joking. <laughs> Where the hell did this come from? <laughs> Luckily I brought a tarp. Right, rapid, rapid tarp deployment. Okay, we're done. Although I'll be honest, it's not really much of a much of a setup. I've not put no ridge line up. I've literally just connected. Oh, I've just connected it. Where have I connected it onto? I've just connected it onto um, onto the continuous loops. Yeah, so no ridge line for the for the tarp itself. Just leave it as it is, um, and we'll just live with that. It'll be all right. It's not that it's not heavy. It's, well, it is heavy, but what's coming through the canopy isn't that heavy. So my bag, I've just, just left out. It's really you put your hand out, and it's not that bad. And the um, the gear sling I've got there. I just there's so much material. I just folded it over itself. I don't know. I'll, we'll see how it, how it survives. <laughs> But uh, it's not that bad, so I'm going back to bed. I'll see ya. <sighs> oh, I feel rough. Shouldn't have come out last night. Couldn't, shouldn't have come out here last night. I feel too rough. That rain was a surprise. It's just rained. Rained and rained all early morning. Got to go and see the mother-in-law today. I like this gear sling. I should have used one years ago, I think. Just handy, just having something at the right height. Um, but I'm not going to use it under the hammock. I don't, like I say, I don't. Uh, I don't need stuff when I'm in the hammock. I don't need loads of stuff under there. What I do want is to have a little area to put all the bags, you know, your your fire kit and your cook kit and all that sort of stuff. You just keep it out of the way, and it's quick and easy just to unhook and grab the whole lot and just move if you need to. I like that idea. Right, that's me. Um, that's me done. Thanks for coming along. What do we talk about? We had a look at that knife. Uh, it's not my not my ideal knife for, for, the, for taking along, that, that little folding knife, but it's very close to a bushcraft knife and, and UK legal, so legal carry. So yeah, it's it wouldn't be my preference, but somewhere where I was thinking, you know what, I'm not sure that's what I'm going to take. So I'm really glad I got it. Um, and there's, an, uh, there's, there's another knife that's a very similar um, Castrom, which is a, the Swedish one, I think. You might want to have a look at one of those. But yeah, really good as a bushcraft knife. As I found when I did the potatoes, not as good at <laughs> cutting veg as my uh, my little oppie nail number six, which, which just goes through beautifully, but I forgot that one. Um, and we had a look at that wood burning stove, which is, which is brilliant. And I love it because it's steel uh, and therefore it's not going to warp. I love it because it's 230 grams. I also love it, um, because it's so easy to, easy to come out, much like a bush box. Um, but I like the fact that when the wood is out, you can put a longer piece of wood in and it's going to be, and the hole where you put in the wood is low enough down that the wood is resting at the other end and so you're just having to feed it up whereas the bush box the hole that you put it into is higher up and so you can only put short bits of wood in anyway um it was very good for for just one person cook up P absolutely perfect you don't have the uh, tray at the bottom to catch the ash but let's face it that you know it always spills out somewhere and uh so i'll see you on the next video um next video I don't know what what it will be. It might I might do an just a do a knife video, um, just go through the various knives for while camping, um, and if you want to think about getting a knife for bushcraft and things like that, and you're interested in it. Anyway, I think it's nice looking at other people's gear and getting their opinion. Um, not that I'm a knife expert. If you want a knife expert, go speak to someone who uses it routinely day day in day out. Um, 
once you find the right knife there's plenty of people out there who can give the detailed reviews but right take care see ya